Hey, put down the extra chicken breast. It's Thomas DeLauer with sixpackabs.com and I'm debunking myths left and right. This time, I'm saving you some money, I'm saving you some heartache, and I'm saving you some gut ache by having you cut down a little bit on the protein consumption while I debunk one of the most common fitness myths that is out there. And that's the myth that you need to be guzzling and chowing down on protein hour after hour after hour. So let's get to it and let's look at the science. You see, the interesting thing about protein, it contains something called nitrogen. Carbohydrates, proteins, and fats all contain carbon, they contain hydrogen, and they contain oxygen. But protein's the only one that actually contains something called nitrogen, which therefore makes it very easy to measure. And nitrogen is generally measured in the urine. So essentially what happens is you use a urine testing strip where you're gonna test how much nitrogen is in your urine. And if you have more nitrogen coming out in your urine than you do what you're actually consuming, well, then it's pretty obvious that you have enough nitrogen in your body because your body's excreting it. Now, we all don't have the ability to just go out and test our nitrogen willy-nilly, but the point is, researchers now have the ability to be able to do that, and it's pretty evident. So that's why I'm excited to do this video for you and show you that you don't need as much protein as you think. And I'm gonna reference some science so that it all makes sense, but first, let me explain a quick summary of how nitrogen balance works, all right? So if you have more nitrogen in the body, that means that you are in a positive nitrogen balance, okay? That means that you're going to build muscle and retain muscle. If you have less nitrogen in the body than you consume, then that means you're in a negative nitrogen balance. That means that your body's breaking down muscle tissue. That means that your body's catabolizing, breaking down your hard work. And if you have equal amounts of nitrogen in your body, that means you're right at homeostasis, you're right at maintenance mode. So if you're just trying to maintain your progress or maintain your gains, that's right where you wanna be. But let's look at some of the science because a lot of times we've been told that we need to be consuming about one gram per pound of body weight when it comes to protein, which, you know, it kind of makes sense, right? It's a nice round number and it's easy to measure. But in reality, it might be a little bit too much. So most of the research papers out there, now this means credible studies from academic sources, find that about 0.82 grams per pound of body weight ends up being about the tolerable upper level that you can take in before you start seeing diminishing returns on your cosmetic goals. Pretty alarming, but it actually can be even less than that. See, there's one study in particular that took groups of bodybuilders, and I thought this one was perfect for you guys at sixpackabs.com because it actually applies to bodybuilders. Okay, what this looked at was those that consumed 0.61 grams of protein per pound of body weight versus those that consumed 1.19 grams per pound of body weight. Pretty big difference there. And they measured their strength, they measured their stamina, and they measured their body composition over a period of four weeks. Guess what? No difference. Nothing, diddly squat between the groups, okay? So that goes to show that even bodybuilders that are training heavily can still get away with 0.6 grams per pound of body weight. They're not burning up muscle, okay? Then there was another study that took another group of people over a longer period of time, okay? This one looked at a three-month window and they measured those that took in 0.77 grams of protein per pound of body weight versus those that consumed one gram per pound of body weight. Well, again, earth-shattering results, no difference between anything. Now, this one even took into account hormonal changes, actually looking at hormone values, and if they changed, if more testosterone, or if there's more cortisol, nothing, no difference. So we're really starting to find out that too much protein is just too much protein. We're just wasting it. But what are some of the things you should be concerned with? I mean, if you're not really that afraid of taking in extra protein, and you're just wasting a little bit of money, what's the big deal, right? Well comes down to the fact that our health does really depend on it. There's more and more evidence that's pointing to the fact that our kidneys do get stressed when we take in a lot of protein, especially when we're doing it chronically, time after time, day after day after day. So what we have to be aware of is not only our kidney function, but also some of the heavy links to cancer that have to do with excess protein consumption. And you can look at me and you can tell that, okay, yes, I eat protein. So I'm not coming at you from some woo-woo standpoint saying don't eat protein. I'm just saying look out for your body because there are some risks that come into play if you're taking in a little too much. And I wouldn't be doing a typical sixpackabs.com video if I didn't reference at least one more study that's gonna at least have this make a little bit more sense. This last study was done by the University of Connecticut. And what the University of Connecticut looked at was three athletes. These were highly trained endurance athletes. They all weighed about 150 pounds. One consumed 68 grams of protein, 
One consumed 123 grams of protein and the other consumed 246 grams of protein. Okay, and what they measured over a period of time was what is called their blood urea nitrogen levels. Those blood urea nitrogen levels are a very strong indicator of overall kidney health and kidney stress. Well, lo and behold, those that consumed the most protein, even over just a four week period of time, had a significantly higher amount of blood urea nitrogen, indicating that they had a strong case of kidney stress. Now, may not mean much in the short term to you right now, but if our kidneys are stressed out, then we're dehydrated. And if we're dehydrated, we're not volumizing our muscles. And if we're dehydrated, we're not absorbing nutrients properly. And it ends up cascading into a whirlwind of other things that newsflash do affect your gains. So make sure that you're paying attention to how much you're consuming. Save a couple bucks, don't eat quite as much protein, and focus on getting good quality nutrients, but also focus on some of the other supplements that are out there rather than just piling in protein. So as always, make sure you're keeping it locked with sixpackabs.com. There's so much good information that you can learn, and if you open up your mind and become a sponge for the knowledge, I can promise you, not only your brain is gonna grow, but the guns are gonna grow and everything else as well. I'll see you in the next video. Make sure you comment and let us know what you wanna see in the future.